Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, August 2nd, and it is a warm and rainy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's overcast, it's, uh, it's raining off and on, and yet the temperature continues to climb. So it's going to be one of those days. Lots of humidity. Eh, life goes on. It is August in southeastern Pennsylvania after all. So I've got my 7LE311KS, I believe, and I am smoking some Cornell and Deal Poplar Camp. And I got this um, because if you remember a few weeks back, I had talked about an experiment I did with Cornell and Deal Yorktown, where I added 15% uh, Perique and uh, I think it was 4% Black Cavendish and jarred that up, let it sit for a couple weeks and then uh, tried it out and I, I really enjoyed it. I, I like Yorktown quite a bit, but I'm not a straight Virginia guy really. Uh, so getting some Perique into that and the Black Cavendish kind of mellowed it out a bit. I, I, th I thought it was a really nice blend. Well. As I'm proudly talking about my creation, one of the commenters said, uh, you, you made uh, Poplar Camp. And I went and looked up Poplar Camp, and sure enough, <laughs> Poplar Camp is Yorktown plus, I believe, 20% Preak, so it's a bit higher in, in the Preak. Uh, and they say a splash of Black Cavendish, so I don't know what the percentage is there. So I thought, well, heck, I enjoyed what I did with Yorktown. Let me see how the Poplar Camp is. And, you know how it how it compares, and it's it's kind of interesting actually. Um, this is good if if you want a, 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 a inexpensive bulk vapor um, ribbon cut. You know, it's uh, I've got to do this ridiculous thing where I show you it, and you can't really see it. But uh, you know, ribbon cut. There's brights, a little bit of darker Virginias, red Virginia. Uh, definitely some chunks of Perique and there's some black cavities. If, if you want to try a good solid vapor that is, you know, available in bulk, easy to pack, easy to light, uh, it's a great, great uh, tobacco. And while I can't imagine a vapor ever being an all-day smoke for me, uh, Virginia Perique blend, um, I'm just too into Burley. Uh, I can imagine that this could easily be an all-day smoke. Um, so I highly recommend you try it out. Now what's interesting is it's definitely, you know, I, can, I can tell that the Yorktown base is there, there's no question about it. And the Perique is, is very evident, it's pretty good on the retrohale, 20% and it's, it, sometimes the, these numbers they give you think, well 20% should be a lot more periky than 10%. Um, this is probably accurately 20%, but it's not like, you know, knock your head off or blow your head off Perique. It, it's, if you retrohale, you're going to know it's there. And, yeah, it's good. It, it, uh, it fits, the, fits the bill for a, for a nice Virginia Perique. No. What's interesting about it is that it's got a bit of a sharpness to it, almost a, uh, I hate to use this word, but a vegetal sharpness. Um, so it's definitely got some green characteristic to it. Green meaning like, like, um, like raw vegetable leaf or something like that. It, it, it's it's uh, almost like a, a candela. Uh, cigar kind of note, but it, but it, don't don't take that too seriously. But it, but it's almost like that, and then it's sharp. And the blend that I came up with was actually very smooth and did not have that note. So there's two possible reasons for that. Not that it matters. Uh, one is the perique that I used was actually about four or five years old, so. It's very likely that what they're using in, in this, you know, Cornell and Deal does make tobaccos pretty much on demand. So it's, it's a younger uh, Perique and probably a younger blend altogether. 
So it might be that my, my Perique had mellowed a bit. It also might be that their splash of Black Cavendish is less than 4%, and I do think the Black Cavendish is important in, in smoothing out these blends. So, subtle differences, um, and, and I, I talk about this not because I think one is good and one is bad, but because I just think it's interesting how you can, you can play with these things and you can still pull out these differences, even though the blends on paper are really very, very similar. So this was fun. This was definitely fun to try, and uh, you know I'm glad I got this. I'm, I'm gonna. I, I got uh, two ounces, and I'm gonna really enjoy smoking this. So if you're a vapor fan and you haven't tried Poplar Camp, give it a shot. Oh, so what else is going on? Um, our air conditioner broke, and. I've been spending a lot of time this weekend getting things ready for them to come in and work on it. Uh, we're hoping, hoping, that it's a sensor that needs to be replaced in the upper attic of the house. And it's stupid, but you know the upper attic is accessed through a closet. The closet is in a room we don't really use, uh, so we tend to stuff things in there. And that's where my tobacco cellar was, and so I spent. Most of the day yesterday, just moving stuff out of there, and it's hot. You know, it's 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 not too bad if we're just sitting around, like in the family room, or you know, we go to bed at night. We got some fans. It's it's not too bad, but when you're in a small room doing manual work, it it's not pleasant. It's also not too pleasant down here, to be honest. Uh, so uh, no pipe work this weekend for me because I gotta get that stuff ready, and there's still a few things we need to do. Um, We've got our our second floor of this house is uh, is actually quite a mess. <laughs> I'm doing I'm I'm renovating one room. I had to completely gut it and get all the, the the drywall out and everything. And I was making really good progress on that. And this has been going on for years. And I got uh, I got had some medical issues that kind of knocked me off course with it, and uh, it went on the back burner. So that room is sort of taken out of. Uh, contention so everything else had to move into the other rooms. It's a four bedroom house and we only use one of them because we, it's just the two of us here. Uh, so anyway, you can imagine there's all this stuff that has to shift around and, and things like that and then you know the rooms that don't get used get a little dusty and, and also I gotta take care of that. So it, it was it was a it was one of the hardest labor days I've had in quite a while yesterday. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say that but it's true. And now I got another one ahead of me today, and I was really hoping this rain would cool things off, but it hasn't. So that's that's my Sunday plan. Um, hopefully, we'll get that pretty pretty much done, and we'll be able to get them in. Uh, I'm hoping that I can get them in on Tuesday. So we shall see. The way they schedule things, there's no way they're going to come in on Monday. So, shop-wise, I, I got a couple things I wanted to show you. Um, I'm really happy about this this pipe I've been working on. Uh, this is for my friend Ed, um, and this is got to put the glasses on to read it. Oh yes, Maro Amal Amal Armalini. There we go. My uh, my Italian and my eyesight isn't very good today. Uh, Mara Armellini, and let's see, this is a nice pipe. This is as it came to me, pretty much. There is some tape around this band uh, that's just there to protect it. So what Ed wanted was uh, he wanted this converted to a church ward, and he also wanted it converted to a nine mil. So what I did was I. First off, I made a church warden stem for it, and this has not been bent yet, but that's the stem. And this was a real challenge because I've never... To, drilling this length of stem, 8 inches, is not easy. Um, getting the, the little 1 16th inch hole that you start with at this end to line up with the tapered bit coming in from this end turns out to be a non-trivial challenge and it took me three tries to get this right but I got it right 
um, and I got it shaped. I, I'm pretty happy with the shape. Uh, because of the size of this pipe, I didn't feel that a thin, wispy stem was appropriate. So what I tried to do was really just make a an extended version of this stem. And this will, of course, have a bend in it, but it is it will accept the 9mm filter. And then, of course, after I made this, I had to adjust the tenon so that it would fit. And it fits quite nicely. So I just got to put a little bend in the top here and polish it up, and that is ready to go. And the other thing I did was I converted this stem so that uh, Ed can use the original stem as well. So if he's in a church warden mood, he's got the church warden stem, or he can have the shorter pipe and still smoke it in both cases with the 9mm filter that he wanted. I've done a couple of, I, you know, I've, I'm, I'm always reluctant to do the filter conversions because they do weaken the shank, but I've been doing a couple more than usual, and in a case like this where you got a banded shank already, that helps a lot because you are going to have to thin out the briar here. But this was a large enough pipe that I thought it could be done without too much uh, danger. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the, the way that's turning out. It was a challenge, and always enjoy a challenge. The other pipe I'm working on right now is, uh, is a Meerschaum uh, for my friend Mel. And this Meerschaum, um, I, I don't have the, the mirror out, but I'll show you the stem. Uh, really beautiful uh, Meerschaum pipe. And it's got this rather nice acrylic stem. As you can see, it's, it's multicolored. It's a, it's a patriotic theme. And unfortunately, what's happening is you can see that they actually fused two different acrylics together here to make this stem. And it's delaminating right in here and that's leading to well there's a leak there, there's a hole in the stem and I say unfortunately because it, I could not fix this um, I tried to patch it with some epoxy and, and there's just it's there's not enough for the epoxy to grab onto for the, the, the patch to take uh, so the next thing I tried to do, well, I tried to do that a couple times. I tried to widen the hole out a little bit. That didn't work either. Um, and the thing is, if I make it too wide, I can't really match the red or the white. Uh, you know, I've got a clear epoxy. I mean, I could find a pigment to make red or white. It probably wouldn't match very well, and it would impinge on the other side. So no matter what I do with this, it's not going to look right. So Mel decided, I hope I hope I got the name right. I think, I think it was Mel. He decided to just go ahead and, and have a black stem made, so a black acrylic. So I've got the black acrylic blank here. I made a tenon. It's a Delrin tenon. Um, it's not bent, obviously, but so next I gotta shape this. It's all drilled. I just need to uh, to shape it, bend it, and I can get that pipe back to belt. So I was hoping those two things would get done this weekend, but the way things are going with the with the work I got to do upstairs, uh, it's probably going to be Monday before I can do much on them. But that's going well. Scotty, your stem is next. So we're moving along. I don't know if you guys look at my website ever, uh, which you don't, you don't need to, but uh, I put a notification on the website that I am not taking any new orders until the end of August because I'm just... I've, I've been very fortunate. I've got a lot of pipes in the shop to work on, and I, I like to give each one full attention and you know work on them. Like I'm, I'm doing these two now. I, I, I didn't actually start the the uh, Meerschaum replacement stem until Thursday, while I was waiting for the epoxy to cure on the tenons of of those uh, two stems for the uh, Armelani. So I, I try not to work on more than one pipe at a time unless I've got something that's going to take 24 hours and then I can start another one. Uh, I try to be really careful with them, you know, take my time, do really good quality work. And I've been so, I've been getting so many pipes in now that it's hard for me to, you know, somebody's going to send me a pipe today and I'm not going to be able to even 
touch it for another month, and I don't like that. So I'm, I'm not taking any new orders until the end of August, and I hope that gives me an opportunity to get caught up on things. So that's about it. Um, not much else going on here. Like I said, it's. I was going to do some gardening this morning, but the rain wouldn't allow it. Burley's coming along nice. Um, I, I showed a picture on, during the live stream on Friday, but I'll, I'll, if I remember, I'll put that picture in here so you can see it. Uh, it's, it's still got a long ways to go. It's only about uh, maybe two and a half feet tall. So it's, it's got a long ways to go. I'm hoping to get these plants to flower and produce some seeds. Um, that, that's really the goal of the experiment this year. If I get some smokable leaf out of it, I'm a happy guy. And right now it looks like I am going to have some, some nice uh, leaves. So we shall see. All the other stuff, tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, peppers are, are doing fine. Uh, not getting a lot of tomato flowers, which has surprised me. I've got a few tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, one um, brandy wine, and then I've got another brandy wine heirloom that is growing beautifully, but just has not produced a flower. So I don't know what's going on there. I am fertilizing. Uh, I'm using an organic fertilizer. I hate to go to something like Miracle Grow, but might have to just to force the flowers. And that's it. So my coffee cup is practically empty. Now it is empty. And I'm about three quarters of the way through this. So I will finish this up, get the video rendering, and uh, then it's back to work for me. So hope you all had a nice weekend. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and uh, have, a, have a great week ahead. Take care, and until we speak again, I'll look forward to talking all again very soon. Goodbye now.